The Techno Spark 7P occupies a unique spot in the Spark series, being a 7th generation Spark device. It's also higher than the Spark 7, the regular Spark 7. With regards to the spec bump in the processor, we get a MediaTek Helio G70 CPU compared to the Helio A25 that the regular Spark 7 has. The 7P is their newest addition to the Nigerian market. It boasts of a 90Hz display, 90Hz refresh rate display, that all new chipset, big battery. But what's behind the hood of this device? It's less than $150, less than $70,000, and we'll be seeing what's special about this device and what's not so special, basically the pros and cons of this device after my extensive usage with it. Without further ado, let's unbox and uncover what the Spark 7P has to offer. Taking the nylon off the box brings us closer to how it looks in terms of packaging. Techno did a better job with the Spark series adding some subtle patterns onto the box. There's a gigantic Spark text and of course specifications at the back of the phone. We are going to tackle every single one of them so stay tuned. Inside the box is where we get the smaller thinner box with labels on that you know that looks like the documentation and the case. Uh, on the back of it is where we get the same ejector tool and when we open up the box we do get the 12 plus 1 month warranty and the rubber case that comes with the spark 7p next up in the topic of discussion the spark 7p itself techno highlights this feature as the 90 hertz refresh rate helio g70 16 megapixel ai triple camera super night mode smile snapshot and the large 5000 milliamp power battery we'll come to the device later but let's check what else is inside the box the regular charger regular usb cable and you know it's not usb-c and uh, you know, we also get headphones that aren't the in ear kind. After the wraps are off, the back of this Spark 7P is seen here in its blue color. It's one of the four colors that you get on the 7P called the Alps Blue. The other colors are the Summer Mojito, or Mojito, I don't know how it's pronounced, Spruce Green, and Magnet Black. The design of the Spark 7P also borrows from the Realme X7 Pro's design, which has a Dare to Leap label on the back. Here we have just the name Techno Spark on the back of this device as the inscription you know here it took just over a minute to set up the spark 7p and we enter the device with high os 7.6.0 this is an android 11 device as well at the top of the spark 7p there's nothing there on the right side is where we get the power button and the volume rockers the bottom section has the headphone jack the microphone port beside it the usb port and the speaker grill one thing i also noted is that it's not a single speaker thankfully thank god it's actually a dual speaker i tried so many times to see if you know i could block one speaker and the other speaker would you know not sound it's it's a dual speaker you know that, that's good the left side has the dual 4G nano sims and micro SD card slot i like how the polycarbonate meshes with the camera bump which make no mistake it's also polycarbonate on the camera section. Techno really tried with the design of this entry level device, the Spark 7P. Plastic is of course very durable and this phone would definitely stay functional even when it falls, when it drops. The rubber case also fits very well on this device so the design on the back still sits intact as well as the cutouts that you get. The phone also comes pre-installed with a screen protector you know, for extra safety against scratches <laughs> but it can get in the way of certain things. The first thing I did when I set up the Spark 7P was enter the settings and check out the settings for the 90Hz display. There are three options on here for 90 hertz, you know, for smoother animations, 60 hertz for longer battery life, which is the standard one we've all been used to, and auto switch refresh rate for different apps to so switch between 60 and 90 hertz. Now, the Spark 7P's 720p display is really a bummer if we're being honest, but since it's a Spark device, it's not a common series device. Not a lot is usually expected in this lineup. It's entry level and it's priced as an entry level device. It's an IPS LCD display, 6.82 inch HD display, and resolution is 720 by 1640. Now, when you take a look at the display in the context of watching videos, it's not the highest uh, quality, but I did notice that, you know, since YouTube doesn't compress videos anymore with uh, respect to people's phones display, I was able to watch uh, videos on the Spark 7P in up to 2K resolution or quite HD resolution, uh, having the maximum streaming resolution set at 1440p, which wasn't bad throughout my usage. It, there was a noticeable difference between 1080p and the higher quality. One thing is for sure, in the MediaTek documentation page, the maximum resolution for uh, this processor is 2520 by 1080p. 
this would have been super dope this would have been something techno would have added to this device but hey we get a 720p display on here and this was definitely a choice either based on the cost or just an inability to make it suit this price but hey at least we get 2k in playback and even in video recording which we'll talk about much later in this video i'd say that day-to-day -day usage with uh, text and images were not bad at all scrolling was also not bad scrolling was great image quality you know rendering on this phone was also quite good i didn't like the haptic feedback on this i never really liked the haptic feedback but they work Another capability of MediaTek's G70 is that the RAM can go as high as 8GB. Again, Techno chose to be conservative here and to offer us two options with the Spark 7P. We get a 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage version as one option. The second option is the 4GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. That's the highest option. That's the one that we have here. And you know, I've not had apps shut down on me. Although uh, Mortal Kombat crashed on me once, I've been able to use the device fairly for the most part without lag. My major pet peeve or annoyance with this Techno Spark 7P, and it's something I highlighted in my Infinix Hot 10 Play uh, review. The bloatware serves a little too much notifications and ads. You can uninstall all of the apps, but you know that that will be bothering you. But keep in mind that you know you have to uninstall them again once you get an update to the software on here it's just a lot of apps it's just a lot of bloatware just a lot of notifications and speaking of software we've got android 11 uh, os on here pretty nice to see it's been updated to be based on high os 7.6 and there are two features that stand out or you know a sort of specialty features for techno moving forward and one of that is peak proof which lets you leave a portion of your screen to be bright while everything else gets a dark filter so let's say you're in a bus and you can only you can only leave the keyboard to type and make sure others don't see your sensitive chats this is actually a cool feature the other specialty feature is the anti-theft uh, feature here you can make sure your phone goes off and request your pattern or password if uh, your phone is unplugged from the charging you know either with the charging or the headphones if it gets unplugged without your permission let me show you so i've co I'll connect the headphone uh, the, the earpiece to the phone and uh let's say i uh unwarrantedly uh, i'll face it to you let's say someone is trying to steal your phone and they remove the cable you're gonna get an alarm yeah until you unlock your phone it's not going to stop sounding which is a great anti-theft feature like quite cool it makes that loud ringing sound until you enter the correct pattern fingerprint or password or your face unlock the whole device closes everything defaults you know to the lock screen that's some extra level of security uh, for your phone uh, in case you might be in a bad situation of someone trying to steal your device and I thought it was quite cool I thought it was very useful these are actually cool and useful features that lean more towards the useful rather than comical or gimmicky or impractical features You've also got, in addition to the multiple other features, App Twin, which lets you sign in to two accounts on something like Facebook, on something that you probably wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to sign in with two accounts anyway. So um, what do you guys think of these extra features? And if you are enjoying this video so far, a thumbs up would really be appreciated. And you can also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon beside it so you'll be the first to know when I post a new video now with regards to the processing power that we have here the mediatek helio g70 which is the best thing they, they could have done to the spark series they did it to the spark 7p it's a 12 nanometer octa-core processor though clocked at 2 gigahertz graphics processing is the mali g52 as well this processor is designed for gamers in mind as seen on mediatek's website and that's the main focus sort of uh it's indeed rendered gaming better than the predecessor i've ever used for the spark series i played mortal kombat and call of duty for over 30 minutes this phone went from 23 percent to 19 percent in my first 15 minutes of gaming four percent lost and from 19 percent again it went down to 15 percent another four percent lost so you can say that you know you lose eight percent for 30 minutes of gaming or maybe four percent for 15 minutes of gaming and as an estimate uh, according to my stats and according to the multiple times i've played you can actually get up to six hours of gaming out of this guy if that's all you're going to do with your spark 
uh, 7p also something i noticed with regards to the speaker is that sound also not only comes out of the bottom which i mentioned it comes out of the earpiece section that's cool indeed I, it's, it's a cool improvement from the previous generation and i keep saying it's a cool improvement because the spark series haven't really had that correct me if i'm wrong with regards to the battery as well compared to the uh, regular spark 7s uh, you have 6000 milliamp hour on the spark 7 here we have a lower 5000 milliamp hour battery on the spark 7p uh, this wasn't bad in my usage however i mostly found that this device was dependable considering how you use it and also considering the fact that we have very little electricity here in nigeria also with regards to the you know regular charger you would need about two hours to charge this device which is not the most amazing but you know it's a 5000 milliamp hour big battery it means you don't have to always worry about charging it to be honest uh, if you're not using it too much for gaming and stuff like that you also get a charging indicator when you plug in the charger here this phone is taller 6.8 inches compared to the 6.5 inches on the regular spark 7 and because of what i believe is the design alignment the fingerprint reader is positioned a little too tall so you have to kind of stretch to reach it some somehow if you don't have big hands now what do i think of it it's a bit inconvenient but you can get used to it the fingerprint reader was actually fast nonetheless and even more secure than the face unlock you cannot actually unlock your phone from the side and it doesn't necessarily have sensors it's just the front camera it's also fast as well but i lean more towards the fingerprint uh, for security for security of my phone however it's just a bit too tall that's the only complaint i have techno markets the spark 7p as a 16 megapixel ai triple camera with quad flash which doesn't leave anything else in information and a lot of people would have to guess what the other two are uh, one thing is for sure i covered one of the lenses the lowest lens the last lens and it shows that uh this is the one assisting with portrait mode and that's usually the two megapixel lens it's usually a two megapixel lens the second lens is the middle lens which is what i believe is a macro lens or a lens that aids with night shots or you know black and white photography especially for night night shots speculatively that's also two megapixels as well however check my pinned comment if there's any updates i will surely update it in the pinned comment i might be wrong uh but i might be right as well <laughs> the front camera is an 8 megapixel shooter nothing too crazy on here however it's able to shoot 2k videos and it also has an eye tracking feature that basically only tracks your eyes and uh, it doesn't translate into the actual image quality but you know it, it tracks it tracks your eyes yeah you also get a uh, dual front facing flashes uh, with the front camera so it's very 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 helpful for selfies at night where you probably won't even be able to capture anything anyway without light the front facing camera selfies quality is fair i can't complain at 8 megapixels of course it's fixed quality there's also no additional lens aiding portrait photography so portrait mode on the front camera is um done by ai or software blur I think it's the same for the back camera the image looks much better than the regular mode and blur the background but it's not perfect the thing is the maximum resolution for the mediatek g70 the maximum resolution the processor can support is actually a dual 60 megapixel camera and 48 megapixels it can also capture 48 megapixels in photos but none of that is present here we only have a single 16 megapixel lens on the back and two other lenses that we can't really tell the number i feel like this is sort of a compromise where would you rather have two 16 megapixel cameras which are expensive by the way or would you have three cameras 16 megapixels and two other cameras let's not name them but they're uh, there are two other cameras that can aid for portrait mode and night shots which would you rather have three cameras sounds like a lot more a lot better for marketing as well so that's that's a guess that that's why i think is going on here nonetheless the images i took from the back cameras uh were sharp decently sharp and usable not something i always land on at the very lower end if i can't use it it's probably not worth it so going closer to the subject blurs out the background a bit and you know it blots it out better skin tones look like it leans a little more on the red or warm side of things it's not the sharpest quality but zooming in will definitely net you details that's that's if you zoom in um from from the phone moving away from close-ups to landscape shots 
there's no wide angle lens on this phone and uh, so you know we start from one x i'd say you do get decent quality regarding the image uh, edges and colors are visible you can digitally zoom up to 5x and even up to the maximum 8x this is where you start to notice some sort of noise in your image uh, of course what you'd expect from digitally zooming in on a, on a somewhat moderate sensor is something like like that like a lot of noise at night is where i think techno kind of give me a head scratching moment the super night mode was so good that it looked like the normal mode shot that was taken at night was a joke the night mode shot the super night mode shot looks really really clear in all aspects However, to achieve this shot, you will have to wait at least 8 seconds. 8 seconds of you steadily holding your hand to take a picture. Make sure that there are no you know, objects moving about. That's hard and that's depending on the fact that your, your subject is not moving very fast. If it's not stable, you will get bad results. But so far, I've been impressed by what Super Night Mode can do. I can't believe I'm saying that. When it comes to the video, it's interesting to note that both the front and the back cameras can shoot at 2K at the maximum. You are also able to do slow motion, but you would only end up with a 720p video. So I don't know why you would want to shoot slow motion in 720p. This option is hidden in the cameras menu until you swipe up and you can also see other modes. 2K video was hands down better than 1080p obviously what would you expect from something that's two times the quality i also tried it in a brother landscape uh, here i must say that 2k quality shows that it's better all the time keep in mind that you might not be able to see and appreciate the full quality of this until you remove the video from the spark 7 to your laptop you can't really see you might not really be able to see the quality from your own phone directly because the 720p display but you will slightly be able to tell anyway one major area you would easily tell the difference is in the zoom when you zoom in on the video when you zoom in in 1080p it looks like it has just so much noise while the 2k seems much much better but hey none of them are actually stabilized images or videos but they're sharp though videos at night were very very grainy and not the best coupled with the amount or lack of stabilization same thing is uh, seen in the front camera side of things however imagery is still very visible i'd like to conclude with a few things i didn't like about the spark 7p and some things that i like that would definitely make this a choice for people starting with the negative starting with the things the the cons i didn't like that high os is still dated with the user experience uh high os has potential but it's not using it and you know it makes this 90 hertz display look less than appealing speaking of things that are less than appealing the amount of bloatware is actually unacceptable <laughs> uh i think the device would be better off without the the apps the bloatware i don't think anybody's asking for their new phone to have all those apps also unfortunately techno didn't at least add a USB C port on here probably might be expensive or probably might be a thing that they're trying to do i i don't know why for for for, for something that's almost seventy thousand error anyway i wish we had a USB-C port on here we still have the same accessories this is probably a price decision that would save techno a lot of money but the users who will end up buying this phone they may not actually care at least the phone still even comes with a charger in the box unlike some of the big brands actually wow not that I think about it. <laughs> With regards to the positives, the Helio G70 is a big step up. A dedicated gaming processor uh, for the Spark series is a good, good move. I also like that you now get 90Hz display, 90Hz refresh rate display on here on the Spark device for what's meant to be a budget lineup. Uh, and as someone who is into design, I'm also a fan of the, the design at the back, the Techno Spark at the back with the Realme inspiration. The Realme inspiration shows on the back here and it, ma it makes the Spark device stand out in a way. You have the tiny things like the stereo speaker, which was actually unexpected for me. I thought it would be a single speaker like everything else. And you know, it's something we've not had on Spark devices for a while. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> What are your thoughts about the Spark 7P? The 64 gig version is 60,900 Naira or $126. While the 128 gig version, this one that we have here is 68,800 Naira or $143. $20 difference, $20 plus or minus. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about what you've seen in this device. And if there's anything I missed, please, please ask me in the comment section below. 
I'll be happy to answer you. Let's chat. Also, if you think the Spark 7P is something you'd love to purchase, um, when you've seen all the positives, Techno sent me a special link which I've added in the description below for you guys. So if you pre-order this phone with that link, you get a Techno wristband worth 7,500 Naira. This is after your pre-order payment is done. And you also stand a chance to win 1 million Naira. You stand a chance to become a millionaire in a raffle and other items like washing machines, TVs, and rechargeable fans via their weekly raffle draw when you participate in the millionaire promo. So just follow that link, guys. Just click that link in the description below. All the best, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.